Did you think that was it? You were sorted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you feel yeah. when yeah. the pain came back? Yeah, it was scary. Yeah. Scary because, um, because I found myself slipping back into the, the old way so, so quickly, so quickly. Welcome to another episode of the Empowered Beyond Pain podcast. Proudly brought to you by BodyLogic Physiotherapy. We are quickly approaching the end of our very first season and we plan on going out with a bit of a bang, so stay tuned for what we have coming over the next few episodes. What do you guys think? Should we keep going and do more seasons? Are you finding this valuable? Let us know, give us feedback and provide suggestions for guests and topics via social media or by emailing podcast at bodylogic.physio. Thanks again for tuning in. We're honoured you're investing in yourself by letting us bring evidence to your eardrums and help make sense of science for you. Episodes with patient voices seem to be very popular and we can see why. There's not much that's more powerful than hearing info from someone who has the lived experience. This week's episode is no exception. Some of you may recognise today's guest, Jamie, from the popular Pain Health videos. He has also appeared on the podcast on episode four and five and was the topic of a paper that we discussed with Dr. Sam Bunsley all about how beliefs influence pain back on episode 10. Jamie's story is particularly special. He had been off work with disabling back pain, had tried strong medications, injections, and was booked in for a spinal fusion. But there was a small fire in him that kept fighting. And luckily, he managed to find the right physio who helped coach him on a journey to get back to living. But as is common, once people recover, there are often ups and downs, and Jamie has had his fair share. These pain exacerbations, or flare-ups, is the topic of today's episode. We're lucky enough to have two world-renowned musculoskeletal pain specialists in the form of Professor Peter O'Sullivan and Dr. JP Canero sit down with Jamie to discuss his journey. Jamie talks about episodes of intense sharp pain he named flash grabs and how terrifying they were. He talks about how his pain was associated with depression and negative thoughts and how in the end there was only one person that could help him, himself. So as I mentioned, Jamie's story is powerful and his video is on the West Australian government funded website Pain Health. Uh, This is one that I send many patients to and we'll link to that video and all the relevant resources from this episode on the show notes page, which you can find at www.bodylogic.physio forward slash podcast. As I mentioned, reach out to us via social media at EBP podcast to let us know if you want another season. If you can leave a review on iTunes and let us know if you find the podcast valuable, we'd really appreciate it. We're going to start today's episode hearing fact nine from the popular 10 facts every person should know about back pain presented by Jamie himself. And then we're going to get into the conversation with Jamie, Pete and JP. And then I'll also play patient voice Joe's reflection on his flare up from episode 14, or I should say flare ups. We hope you enjoy this episode of the Empowered Beyond Pain podcast. And remember to ask, is there more to pain than damage? Pain flares don't mean you're damaging yourself. While pain flare-ups can be very painful and scary, they are not usually related to tissue damage. The common triggers are things like poor sleep, stress, tension, worries, low mood, inactivity or unaccustomed activity. Controlling these factors can help prevent exacerbations and if you do have a pain flare-up, instead of treating it like an injury, try to stay calm, relax and keep moving. So, um... This podcast is a discussion about um, pain flare-ups or pain exacerbations, and those those can occur in a situation where you have ongoing pain and you get a, like a spike of pain, or they could also occur at a time where your pain is resolved and, and then it re-emerges, like suddenly re-emerges. And we're really lucky to have an expert in this area, <laughs> Jamie, and um, I think one of the things that's really interesting about your story Jamie is that you've had both of those experiences mm. and um and you know your your story is well captured in the pain health um website where you kind of talk through your journey where you kind of had 
really quite disabling and distressing pain. Mm -hmm. And I want you, if you can tell us about what happened in that first part of your journey, because you've got a few chapters. You kind of had the the journey into into real trouble, the journey out of trouble, and then a period where your life was really good, and then you had the re-emergence of pain again. So I'd like to grab hold of a few of those chapters and let you tell it, get you to talk, tell us through sure. how that was, what was going on for you. Okay. Well, so how I Chapter dug, one dug myself good. into the hole. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Um, I, th- I was so doing, I was doing weights yep. and I, and I hurt my back and then I continued to do weights and then it got to the point where I, I thought I couldn't, well, it was, my back was getting sore, but I kept going and then and then it just went. I I don't I don't actually know. I, like I say, I was I dug that hole pretty quick, and it went from from that to driving to work with my foot just buried on the sill, trying to keep my weight off my back, to sitting with a towel behind my back, like everyone said yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. To then it just it was always on my mind. Like watch someone sit down, and I think, shit, I used to sit down like that, you know, and I'll be, yeah. oh. and and you just think of everything. As it gets worse and worse, and then, and then it got so, then it got as bad as I just had to lay down right. all the time, stop going to work, um, yeah, and that was it. And then started going to the doctor, so I went to the doctor, got prescribed lots of different medication. Um, they, you know, some doctors were saying, oh, I remember one in particular. As I was getting onto the bed, she said, um, oh, good to see you're guarding your back because I was stiff, like stiff as as anything. And then so got on uh, Lyrica, Meloxicam, and um, what's that other one? Tramadol. Tramadol, that's the one. And Tramadol. So then I was on them and just zonked out, bought myself Netflix just to lay there. And I'd get up and try and go for a walk every now and again. But I, I, had, I had a picture of my back that it was, I guess, really fragile. And like, like I say, like a glow stick where where you snap it and that glass shatters. And if I, if I would sneeze or something like that, then I, I would think of that happening to my back because it was like, a, like it grabs like that and because mm-hmm. you're so tense anyway. And then if that would happen, I'd think, okay, I've, um, I've set myself back for no, for no reason. I'd, like no one told me this. I'd just come up with this. Mm-hmm. And, and like on reflection, maybe it's because I was on the drugs. Maybe that is what made me think that as well or... Mm. you know online a lot of stuff and seeing seeing really physios tough, yeah. that weren't helpful that were because i never had i never had sciatica i just had lower back pain yeah and um yeah so it was like they didn't understand it if i didn't have sciatica then what's what's the problem kind of so mm. i was hearing about everyone with sciatica and i'm like no that's that's not me mm. my back sore you know just mm. my lower back mm. So then I dug that hole real quick and got into laying down yeah, real quick. Right. So it sounds like at the beginning, you know, you were like pushing yourself hard, hurt yourself yeah. doing weights, yep. try to keep going, yep. and then your world slowly started shutting down. And yep. in that process, you were trying to guard and protect yourself while you were doing everything and it yeah. wasn't working. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 And then you kind of got to a point where you just couldn't keep digging that anymore. <laughs> and yeah. so you were, you were kind of left lying, lying down. Yeah, yeah, that's all I could do yeah, right. at that stage. Yeah. And how scary was that for you? Terrifying. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm line? a real active person. Yeah. And I, so I couldn't go to work. So you feel guilty about not going to work because yeah. you're ringing them up. And, you know, they, they were really good though. So, mm-hmm. so I had a good like that. But, you know, and I was still getting paid. So... But I feel guilty I couldn't pick up my kids, yeah. couldn't mm-hmm. help out, do yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's a, it's, you're scared and you feel guilty mm-hmm. and you're on drugs, I suppose, which mm-hmm. is changing the whole way you think about stuff mm-hmm. as well. And you think, you know, am I, am I going to get out of this? You know? Yeah. And, and yeah. did you have a sense that you were stuck in that space? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, because I, I saw a neurosurgeon and then I ended up getting a discectomy. Yeah. And then that didn't help because, you know, I, I pr- probably was something I didn't need because nothing changed anyway, yeah. but I didn't know that. Yeah. And then I was booked in to have a, a spinal fusion yeah. and then that yeah. was one week out of getting a spinal fusion yeah, is okay. when I come to a, a physio. With a different approach. With a different approach. So how was it when you were thinking my back is, you know, at the point where I, I need to get a fuse? How, how did that feel for you? I was like... 
everyone around me was saying, get the fusion. And I was the I was going, no, I don't want this. So I put it off for as long as I could. Mm. And then it, and then it was just like, whoa, what do, okay, what else do I do? Everyone's telling me to do it, except for my except for my dad, actually. And he was the one that rung and found a, a different physio for me. Yeah, so, right. yeah, so I tried up to probably four, but also the neurosurgeon that I saw and, you know, thanks to him being kind of honest or whatever, but I did ask him, I said to him on the MRI, I said, have you seen people with a back um, look worse than mine that, you know, got away with not having a fusion? And yeah. he said, oh, I, I said something, or have you seen worse? Yeah. And he said, yeah, I have. And I was like, okay, well, I, you know, not everyone's so better than, I'm better than, I'm <laughs> going to be better than most people. Yeah, right. i got more drive to not so do this. So, yeah, yeah, of hope. yeah, but I didn't know what to do with yeah, that, okay, you know. Okay. So I just went home and laid down and yeah. and then went for a little walk and then had a sneeze and thought, oh, shit, here we go again. You yeah, know, so. Right. so those pain events, you know, when you were in that dark place where you're like stuck on the bed and, and those little pain spikes that you had. Yeah. What did they mean to you? What did you think? You know, you setback. talked about that. Yeah, yeah. it meant setback. Yeah, right. That meant that, and like I say, I, I, I made this up and I don't know why I made it up, but every time that happened, it was, I used to call them flash grab. I had a name, I even named it. Yeah, I'd right. say it was like a flash grab because it like did yeah. tense through your yeah. whole back. Yeah. And because he's so tense any, everywhere yeah. already, yeah. it was just like, yeah. And so I even named it and when it happened, I, I had a, plan I, okay that set me back probably two days or so that's two days i have to lay down that right. it was like a setback all yep. the time so yep. and i remember going to into the backyard and there was <laughs> out of the whole backyard there's um there's one piece of um really slippery slippery like mason oh, what do you call it like you have your bench tops yeah uh, stone yeah, yeah. there's one p- piece like that and it was under long grass and I stepped on that yeah, and slipped because it was yeah, had right. been raining. And I was just like, ah, oh, out of the whole backyard, a sprawling backyard. I've stepped on this. I'm the only one I'm with other people. I've stepped on this. This is going to set me back a week or so. You know, yeah, it's right, just like, yeah, right. you know, the world's conspiring yeah, kind right. of against you. And what did you think was causing that pain? You know, when that happened, I know you gave that image of that, you know, snapping the yeah. flash and stick yep, sort of thing yep. but what did you think was happening in your body when that happened i just thought that da- well damage i suppose yeah. like i just thought it was i don't know it hurt so mm. i thought it's damage you yeah know? Okay. i just so thought, for you pain meant i'm doing harm to yeah, myself yeah, yeah and so it made total sense that of you course. would lie down yes and not yeah. move of course and guard your back yeah because you were thinking that would protect you against doing more harm yeah, yeah. okay yeah. so you talked about um like coming up to the point of having the fusion and you decided to go down a different path yeah and that path was really different what was different about that path movement right. movement straight up like get on the exercise bike throw away the towel from but i mean my wife drove me and i was laying, <laughs> laying in the seat like you know had it pinned back and mm. you know and then and if i was if i did have to drive somewhere like i so say i'd have the towel behind my back and Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then, yeah, I was told, throw the towel away, chill out, get on the exercise bike, do these stretches, do this. So the stop opposite of everything you've done. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. So by then I'd stopped taking tab. I'd stopped all the drugs, but I was drinking. Every right. night I'd think, oh, I've made it till four o'clock. I'm going to get, I'm going to drink. So I'd yeah, drink yeah. wine and so stuff like that. So you replaced the medication I did, with yeah, alcohol. Which yeah. was probably very, yeah, yeah. More counterproductive as yeah. well. So, But I thought I was doing the right, well, yeah. As in terms of weaning, I suppose, or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, might have been there. So, did it make sense to you to do the opposite? To go, did it make sense to relax and move when you were that sore? Nah, but I like the idea. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. No, it didn't make sense. No. Right. Because if you were, and if your thought was, this is this is a damaged back. Yeah. Then moving it. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. exercising yeah. it wouldn't make sense to you. No, and I'd been laying down for six months at that stage, like out out of work, laying down, six months. Right. So I'd, So know, how scary was it to start to move again? It was scary, yeah, it was, it was scary. 
Yeah, right. It was scary, but really exciting as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. they're kind of two different thoughts. You got yeah. a brain. You got the part of your brain that's saying, "I want to get back to living again." Yeah. And yeah. the part of the brain that's saying, "Protect this yeah. really painful part of your body." Yeah. That were working against each other. Yeah. And it's it's weird because there were moments like it wasn't six months of just like I say I was laying down and I was, but there would be sometimes when I'd. I wasn't sore and I'd be going, oh, what's, what's going on here? And then I'd wake yeah. up sore, you know, and I'd yeah. be like, it was really confusing, yeah. really confusing. Yeah. But How did I, you make I didn't sense know. of that? I didn't. Like, yeah, okay. But I was, say I'd go from my room to the toilet or something, I'd get to the toilet and I'd be like, I was puffing and I'm like, what, what's going on here? But I'd, I'd held my breath the whole way there because I was, yeah, no, you know, always so on edge, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a step. And I'd be worried about stepping down the step like it's a step. Yeah, so you, know? you had no trust in your body, basically. No, no. None at all. No. How long did it take you to get trust back in your body again? I don't know. Probably as, ma- as much time as it took me to get in yeah. six so months. Six months to dig a hole? Yeah, yeah. Six months to get out of the yeah, hole. Yeah, but like it didn't just, I didn't just get out. Yeah. It was out in steps and then back. And then mm. I'd mm. do something a bit too, too much, do mm. too much of something. And then... Yeah, so it was so like that. It must have been very brave for you to kind of go from protecting, guarding, avoiding to relaxing, moving, engaging. I don't know about brave. I was just really happy that yeah. there was a different, there was a, an alternative. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. I just, you know, I, I knew that I could, if, I mean, yeah, once I was told that it, I could do it, then yeah. I thought, so you I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you could do it even though your body was saying this is a really bad idea. Yeah, because some, some like at times during that six months, I I kind of thought, what am, what am I doing? Am I, mm. is this, there were glimpses of, am I doing this to myself? Is this like a, a sometimes I thought even like, is this a depression? Am I, yeah. is this a form of yeah. depression? Because yeah. I was surely depressed. Yeah. And I thought, is this a, like a, side effect of that or is this you know or or is that the thing and depression's a side effect i I don't know it's it's really i don't think about it a whole lot so it's yeah no not at all now yeah so it was but uh, yeah there were times there when i'd I'd be going what what am i doing what am i doing so what i'm interested in jamie is when you were going that six months where you were thinking every time you hurt you were doing damage yeah but then the next six months where you kind of do, did the opposite mm. and you were moving and you were getting active and you were doing stuff yeah. which previously would have hurt you. Yeah. What, how did you change the, did the meaning of the pain change to you? Did the what? Sorry. Meaning of the pain change to you? Like you were saying you thought every yeah. time you were doing something hurt, you were damaging yourself more. Yeah. How did yeah. that, how did the meaning of the pain change to you? Just by moving and, and going, okay, I can, or I can squat down and I can feel, it just felt awesome to start stretching out right. and to feel like, you know, when I feel, and, and when my back cracked as well, because I, I was so excited if I'd turn one way and my back would crack, I'd be like, because that feels like tension going, you know, right. and I'd be like, okay, things are letting go. But it right. took so, so long yeah. for everything just to let go. And yeah. Yeah. So do you think that the tension was a driver of your pain? Yeah. You do. Yeah, it's it's like when um when I first come to the physio and he said you don't need a fusion, you've given yourself a fusion. Right. And I was like, okay, that makes that makes sense because everything was so you tense. Clenched everything. Yeah, right. yeah, and I you know crouching down like this and mm. yeah, just not mm. bending, not mm. not fluid. At so all. so the meaning of the pain changed instead of thinking I'm damaging myself to go, I'm clenching myself. Mm. That's a different thought. Yeah. 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 And, and one's less scary. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Well, I, and one I you just, have control over. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just did not want a, a fusion. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't yeah. need one. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, right. and knowing now, but everyone was saying, you're laying down, you, you need to do something about this. You need to get that fusion. Yeah. Even a physio I went to, he said, oh, he saw the neuro, neurosurgeon. He said, oh, if that guy says you need a, a fusion, you probably need a fusion. Yeah, so that's so, a really hard thing to push back on. Yeah, yeah. As well as a bloke at work, at the same time as this, I, 
was going on. He was in the process of getting a fusion. He went to a neurosurgeon who said he didn't need one. So he found a neurosurgeon that gave him one and he said that he was better after that. Yeah. And so I'm going, what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? You know, that everything's telling me don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's telling, everyone's telling me to, but I'm telling myself not to. And this guy's just got better. Mm, yeah. What's going Maybe on? Maybe I should do the same thing. Maybe I should do the same thing. Yeah. So you then had a period of three years mm. when you were going. Like, no what was life look like for you then? Just normal. Like, it didn't look like anything. It was just normal life. What was normal just, look like? For just you? well, not thinking about my back. Yeah. You know? Just okay. yeah. And doing not that. a thought. Like not like I say when you see someone sit down, it doesn't occur to you that oh I used to do that or I wish yeah. I could sit. You know yeah. when they slump in a chair. Yeah. You know, because everything would be like, uh, like an, uh, you know, like a invalid or something yeah. sitting down. You know, so just yeah, not not concerned, and that's the idea, isn't it? To not think about, yeah, got it. You know, relaxing and, is not and thinking you about anything. Doing all your normal activities and yeah, yeah, doing yeah. what weights, everything, right. um, bouldering, yeah, um, boxing, yeah, yeah, everything, working, everything, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and did you, and did you think it was gone? Before, did, you th- did you think that was it? You were sorted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you feel? Yeah. When the pain came back. Yeah, it was scary. Yeah. Scary because um, because I found myself slipping back into the the old ways just so quickly, so quickly. So tell I mean, the first about, thing that's what happened. Yeah, I was digging a, a trench. And um, it just, I felt it cut across my back, the same pain right. that, that I had before. Yeah. And, um, and it was real, like it's, you know, oh, it was real that. pain, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so I didn't have, the, not the sciatica again, it was yeah. just back pain. Yeah. And so I went and I, I laid on the couch. Right. And because um, I was pretty hungover as well mm. when it happened. So I, I needed to rest anyway. So laid on the couch, then I found myself. As I'd move on the couch, when because I had that before, when you move, it, it hurts when you move, and so mm-hmm. and you, you use your legs to kind of lift you so that you yeah. spin over, and it's yeah. you get that pain all again, and that that hurts more than yeah. walking around. That's yeah. the bit that really hurts you, and yeah. so that bit's that's what scares you and scared me back right. into going. Wow, okay, it's on again, you know. Right, and and because it took so long, I mean, I knew that it. It probably wasn't going to be as bad, but because I, I didn't know, I didn't know how quickly I could get out of it. But right, I was thinking, I was thinking, was months, I was right? thinking pretty long term. I was thinking, thinking a couple of months or something like that, you right. know. But okay. I couldn't get hold of me physio, so I was starting to stress, and I'm going like, okay. And then, so um, what did you do in that week? Well, I thought about getting Stan because I hadn't. I'd, <laughs> I'd already got the Netflix. physio, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. But and then I'm, I'm going like, oh, what are you talking about? What What are you thinking? You know, you got Netflix last time, yeah. zonked out, and now you want to get Stan. And it was just like, what are you doing? But I was because I was laying down and I was doing those movements. I was going, no, this is. This is bad. This is pretty bad. Because right. yeah. every time you moved to her, yeah. you were thinking you'd done damage again. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'd, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your body was giving the same warning signs that you used to do before. Yeah. But your head had two experiences now that you're kind of counteracting. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. So then what happened? Well, so I went, you were thinking two months. You I was thinking, thinking, yeah. I, yeah, I was thinking something And like you that. went to yeah. bed again. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah. That, that lasted for a week until right. I got in to see the physio. And then and what happened? Well, he, he just said, what are, you, what are you doing? Pretty much. And I was like, yeah, I know. I know. Okay, tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, because if, if I could have afforded... The, the first time, if I could have... I would have thought, I wish, I wish I could just take the physio home and just him tell... Me. Like, that's what you need. You'd think you'd need someone to watch you the whole time mm-hmm. and tell you... You can't do that. Oh, don't do that. That's what you feel mm. you need. Mm. And, but then I come in and I was just like, do this, do this. So what kind of things did you do? Cause, like cause real I'm... heavy, like squat, not he- not heavy with weight, but squats, like deep down squats. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, crouching down. I'm going, are you sure? And he's going, yes, yeah, I'm sure. You know, and 
you know, the open book and stuff like yeah, that, right. and just so things that I've done before. Move. Yeah, made me move. Yeah. So your brain was saying, "Don't move." Yeah. Your body was clenched; it didn't yeah. want to move. Yeah, so quickly. It happened but you had, so quick. Yep. You you put your trust in someone to say, yeah. "Move." Yeah, yeah. And I knew I had to. I knew that was right. right. I knew. Right. Yep. And that you knew that was right because you'd done it before, mm. and it helped. Yeah, I saved myself. And the opposite like a year this time. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it worked yeah. so well. Yeah. So you went home. With a plan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And did it and executed the plan. And, yeah. and I think I, I was only off work for a week. So it was that was during Christmas time. So yeah. I had, there was a week off anyway. Yeah. And then, so then I saw, come to the physio and then I was off for a week and I went back. I wasn't moving as quickly as I normally do. Like I was, I remember walking from the gate to the, um, to our workshop and I was moving slower, but yeah. sure. But yeah. So how long did it take you to get over that second event? Probably two weeks, I reckon. Right. Two weeks. Did you have a lot of treatment over that time? No, just once. Oh, just so once. you saw the person once? Yeah, yeah. They gave you a plan? Yeah. You did it? Yeah. And your body recovered? That's right. So what do you make of that? It's movement, isn't it? It's movement. It's not locking up. It's not taking drugs. It's it's just movement. Right. Yeah. Keep, keep and, moving. And does it make sense to you that that's... It does now. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. It, it, of course, yeah. Because it's, it's for a lot of sense. people, we I think we've got a population that's conditioned to think if it hurts, there's something damaged. Right. You need yeah. to protect it. Yeah. You need to stop. You need to rest it. Yeah, yeah. And it's really hard when you, that's your mindset. Yeah. To go against the grain. Yeah. Well, I mean, I almost did it again. Right. So yeah, it is. Huh. And have you had another event since? No. Nah. I I have I've twinged my back. Yeah. And that, but. It's like, yeah, okay, no thing. So I just can, I'd continue what I do, but, you know, not, not stupid. I won't whack another 10 kilos on yeah. the bar or anything yeah. like that. I'll just, okay, that's, that's a bit sore. I'll just do something else, you know, and then, and yeah. But if I do, if I ever do get a twinge in my back, then I'll do squats and stuff like that. Not with weight or anything, yeah. but so deep squats. Exercise yeah, exercise that area for sure. Yeah. So yeah. move the painful bit. Yeah. Yeah. In a gentle, repetitive way. Yeah, yeah, and you can feel it draw out, and it feels good. It's good. It's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, if you were to, you know, talk to people who've hurt their back, mm. what advice would you give them? Because there's, we know back pain is like the leading cause of disability in the world. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the number one of any health condition. Yeah. Right. It really buggers people's lives up. Yeah. It impacts on their no, work. Like that, you yeah. know, their social yeah, engagement, yeah. family. So yeah. all those things. Yeah. The ability to engage in physical activity. Yeah. And and it's scary for people. It's mm. a genuinely scary thing. And I think we're conditioned to believe all the things that you describe. Yeah. That's like you know, if I'm hurting, I'm damaged. I need to protect it and avoid. And there's heaps of messages that reinforce that as well. Yeah, you. And yeah, if you go online in the community. You, well, online, yeah, it's yeah, like everything. I think I've said it on another video. It's like if you go on the Google, I think people are trying to compete about who's had the most operations done. Yeah. If you look on there, because it was oh, like oh, I've done had this done L four five. Oh yeah, but I've got this and C one two whatever they are, you know, mm. and and, mm. and so yeah, that's that stuff is not good to look at. Mm. So what so, would you recommend for people? I recommend well finding someone that can help you to move, not someone right. that will load you up with drugs and say, yeah. just, you know, lay down or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Get yeah. a plan to move. Yeah. Yeah. And so how confident would you be if you had another night out on the town and dug another trench? I would have to say confident. Yeah. But as long as I'm close to the phone, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that kind of makes sense too. Yeah. Like that idea of, been able to have someone who can give you some support when yeah, you yeah. need it. Yeah. But it sounds yeah. like the key thing was n- knowing what you could do because you were motivated to do it as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's what that was another scary thing to get your head around is that you realise that there's only one person can get you out of this in the end. Yeah. Like you yeah. can draw up as many plans or you yeah. can get as many plans or whatever, yeah. but unless you actually do it, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. And, and you can choose that. That is a road that you could choose. And, yeah. you know, if you don't, if, and in, in some ways it's kind of easier to just lay down and take drugs and 
not worry about anything, you know, and you could do it. You could, I suppose. Do you think you could worry about nothing doing that? Oh, not me. No. I don't think so. <laughs> no, but I don't know. Well, not Maybe some people, people can. Not many people doing that in a line. They're not, They're not worrying. Yeah. No, I suppose so. Because actually most human beings need to move to feel good about living. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. But, yeah, so. And and I'm interested in, because you'd seen lots of different healthcare practitioners over the time, and what would be the message that you would want them to give someone in pain? That was I, I don't know. What should they? What to like a physio or something? Yeah, you know, doctors, physios. I mean, you saw doctors, yeah, physios, yeah. surgeons, like a whole bunch of people. Yeah. And and if you if you wanted to get them to give a different message, the the messages that you got got you into trouble. Go back to uni or what <laughs> else? learn something. Or maybe learn not, the right maybe, way. Or, well, I don't know. But but, but in the messages, if it's well, in my mind. It sounds like the thing that switched for you is like yeah. movement is not damaging you. Yeah. Movement is the thing you need to get well. Yeah. It was, and, and that was... Even hearing, though I hurt. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, well, they've got it. Because I was mismanaged, and I don't hold anyone responsible. It was me as well as a lot of mismanagement, I guess, or, or bad advice. So, I don't know, can, can you say stop giving bad advice, I suppose? That's, you know, well, and if think- someone comes in and... They're guarding their back when they sit down. So maybe, you know, maybe don't do that, you know. Yeah. Maybe try and yeah. get, move a bit freer or yeah. something, you know. Yeah, because there's lots of ergonomic advice out there for mm. people. Yeah. Lifting advice for people, which all goes to guard your back, protect yeah. your back, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think the message, I've heard the message from other sources as well and it's good to hear it it's getting out that's great so there's a general shift yeah Yeah. it's well yeah from i've heard a couple of Mm. you know a couple i've heard a couple of times so Mm. maybe it's getting out slowly i think it's very slow though yeah Yeah. Yeah. i don't know but as long as you've got you know you know how much money is invested in neurosurgeons and and you know all the okay what all happens there and MRIs without, you know, without people getting MRIs and CAT scans, mm. how many people are going to lose their job? It's like, mm. yeah, mm. I suppose. So. And it's tricky because we do know that there, for some people, surgery is the right thing. Yeah. Um, you know, if you've lost power in your leg and, you know, you've, you've, you've got, you know, losing power and sensation and you can't pee and those kinds of things. That's yeah. a, that's a, that's a clear that's reason example, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that that's a reason for surgery. And yeah. the, the thing that was interesting, as you described, is that you had stuff, stuff on a scan, but it didn't kind of relate to your presentation. No, well, uh, so the, your pain was in the back, not the leg. Well, when I, when I found the physio that I found, um, he was the first guy that, cause I, he go, he said, Oh, can I see your MRI? And I was like, oh, okay, and I give give the MRI summary report. Mm-hmm. He said, no, no, yeah, MRI, and that was the first out of four or five physios. He was the first one to actually put the report up and mm-hmm. check it out. It's like, ah, oh, okay, looks like bone. I think bone stress was, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and he said, you know, you've got okay protruding discs, but you know, you're a forty year old bloke who isn't gonna have something like that on on there, you know, and. Mm-hmm. So, well, that was that's what happened to me anyway. Yeah. So it's kind of was a, a less threatening. Well, first of all, was a, a good education around the MRI, but also yeah. it wasn't a threatening information about what was happening. No, no, yeah. that's right. And it, and it was well, it was a relief to hear. Okay, I can see something, not just read the report. Mm, and then yeah. you know, it, I thought, okay, this this guy knows his stuff, you know. And then he yeah, said, so yeah, gave you confidence. Definitely. In yeah. The professional. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So one of the interesting things is that you, like you, as you said, like you dug a hole and you're in trouble for six months and then you came out of it. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like you came out of it and you went back to doing everything you did plus more things. Yeah, like, but it, like it was a steady way out. Yeah, it wasn't just, yeah. yeah just, so yeah. what gave you confidence to go, because you said you're going harder. Just, after, really, after once just, getting stro- just getting stronger again and just, yeah, just, just like the feel the feel of using my body again and you know being able to stretch and you know everything everything mate just moving again and that yeah mm. yeah and during that because you said it was about six months right that mm. you took oh, you just to, laying down or no the afterwards the, the yeah. kind of the rehab process was about yeah. six months yeah and then by the end of that process were you concerned about your back at all no no 
Did you so, feel like you needed to protect it or did no, you? No, not at all. Not at all. Not until I heard it again. And, right. uh, yeah. And then it's I was like, oh, oh, no. Yeah. And that's what rattled you? It rattled me big time, yeah. Yeah. More than I, more than I thought it would, yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And what do you think are the key points during that rehab that allowed you to get out of the hole? What are the key things? Um, well, I mean, you say that pain has a memory and then mm-hmm. I suppose so getting out of pain must also have a memory, right? Or, or the way sure. yeah. the way that you can, can do that. So, but when I had that plan, when I got the plan, I was like, I, I can do this, you know. And so I just went home and, and did it, you know, every, I think twice a day I'd do my exercise. I didn't do it more because in the first six months when I first got hurt, I used to do it more. I thought, okay, I can, I can do more than this, you know, and then I'd wind up getting sore again and then that was kind of back step. So I just, yeah, I pretty much followed it and then, and then it was good, you know, and I think it's, it's to do with the time frame. It's, it's got to be, you know, that it was only sore for that long before I started moving again, mm. not that long, and then it all come together. And during the, the six months um, of that rehab and you said you kind of was steady and you had a few steps and you kind of went back and you had some flare-ups along the way. How important do you think were for you to have those flare-ups during the rehab while you're being coached to be able to move forward? It, um, important to have them or, oh no, that was, that was terrifying okay. to having them. Yeah, yeah. Cause it, but then it's like, I, I just wish I could have had someone with me 24 hours a day saying, you know, oh, that's okay. Don't worry, you, 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 know, you know, just do this and you, you'll be okay. I thought, you know, that would have been great, but that's just not possible. So, you know, um, so, so then I'd get back on the phone. You, from what I'm yeah, hearing, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd get back on the phone. If I didn't have a, a, an appointment already, I'd make one. And going to the physio was just more like just getting coached through it, I suppose. Because yeah. it was never yeah. hands-on like you, you'd need a massage or anything like that. I think the most, the hands-on that I did have was lay down on your stomach and you'd just press on my back and I could feel it, you know, and I was like, holy, <laughs> is that all right? Like, is this kosher or what, you know? And that was it, you know, but then go home and do the do your damn exercises, you know, and that's it. You know? So, yeah. so what did that, that made you feel like when someone like wasn't, because it doesn't sound like he was being careful with your back, yeah. he was actually just putting yeah, pressure on it. Push, yeah, yeah, big so time. So what did that make you think? Fearful, but like at that stage, I had pretty much complete, well, not pretty much, complete trust that he was doing the right thing. Exactly. I mean, the, the, he told me I didn't need a fusion. That was tick the big box straight away. You're like, that. Yeah, big time. Yeah. So when he was doing that, did it feel to you like gave you confidence in your body? It did, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like someone that, um, you know, looks at your scan, can explain to you what's yeah. happening, yeah. you know, listens to your story, then handles your body or uses your body in a way that demonstrates confidence. It yeah. wasn't feeling scared of doing that. That's right. And gives you a plan that is clear yeah. and that is achievable and you could do it by yourself. Mm. They sound like were important things for you. The, oh, the, like, uh, yeah, to this day, I'll sometimes like every probably six months, I'll just email the guy and just yeah. say, man, thank you. Thanks so much. Because like he saved my life, I honestly, believe that because at the at some of the worst times i was like i'm not i can't do this anymore you know Mm. so no definitely yeah Mm. that's what it was about for sure thank you for sharing your story thank you very much man Mm. i think um one of the things we know about back pain is it's really really scary Mm. and um and you feel like no one else has walked that journey so to have someone like yourself share that story is really really valuable and, um, you know, we had some other podcasts and, and already people, you know, contacted us to go, that story was really yeah. gave me hope. Oh, cool. And I think that's, that's the one thing that often isn't out there is yeah. that people just lose hope. Yeah, well, like, like I say, I love to see all yeah. these people and oh, I've was done nothing, it all. Yeah, there was nothing for me on YouTube or reading. There was nothing but bleak, bleakness. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And do you think, you know, the Pain Health website, because your video is up on that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that's a, a, a good source for people to go to, to kind of have a bit of a different understanding of what's if, going on? If it's going to perpetuate the teachings of, yeah. you know, move, then yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it saved me anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I can't speak for anyone else, but yeah. if, if anyone else has got back pain the same kind of way that I had, then 
if I can do it, then they can do it. But yeah. you just need to know what to do. Yeah. That's all. And if they're telling you what to do, then that's a good yeah. thing. And having a coach you trust. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. And a plan. And a plan. And yeah. doing the plan. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's probably the other thing is you were really disciplined from what you're saying mm-hmm. to do that plan. Yeah, well, uh, like I say, I, it, there's only one person going to get yeah, you out of it. Exactly, yeah. And you've you yeah. got to realise that. And that can be really scary. Yeah. That, uh, you know, you sit down and you have that moment that, oh, yeah. this is on me. Yeah. I've, I've done this, now I need yeah. to do it. Yeah, and that's to, why to, yeah. coaching is important, isn't it? Because yeah. it supports you along that journey. Of course, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. But it's interesting, you only needed the one <laughs> session on the second time. Yeah. Because yeah. it just bumped right, you back on just, track. Yeah. yeah. And it was like a, what are you doing? moment yeah yeah and, and i knew that anyway i just needed to mm. i did i needed to hear it otherwise yeah. i'd be still on the couch probably <laughs> <laughs> rolling scared of rolling over yeah, yeah. it's quite interesting because some of the things that you say they really um reflect what we see in the in the literature uh of people developing pain and people uh you know you get these body sensations that as you said before oh i've got this zing in my back so that means i'm out for two days or you yeah, kind of right. make these associations between symptoms and consequences. Yeah, yeah. And you, you have your thoughts and, and that builds a memory that is a threat memory. Yeah. And it sounds like over those six months, you're slowly building these new skills of how to use your body. Yeah, mate. Like I said, yeah. I never learned that. No one taught me that. I yeah. did it myself. Mm. Yeah. What an idiot. Oh, you mean <laughs> digging the hole? Oh, no, no. Oh. I did that thought process yeah. to myself. Yeah. Like yeah. no one... I never read anywhere that oh, if you hurt yourself, you, you know. That's uh, what you should do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just, you know, I just. Yeah, it was weird. Protection. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And then that period of where you're kind of learning this new kind of safe memory, where you're kind of learning how to use your body in a more confident way, in a more relaxed way, which is completely against what you're doing before. But it took a bit of time to yeah. for that memory to overcome the the threat. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and I feel I feel terrible for anyone that's been in it longer than six months because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people because and that'll probably take even longer you know or you know maybe that maybe it won't I don't know but that's what it took for me and I'm, I'm just glad I got out of it so quick because yeah there's a lot of people that have been in it for a lot longer they'll probably look at my video and go ah six months he did nothing you know, that's <laughs> nothing I've like, done two you know three four years or something you know I don't know I think everyone's journey is a different journey I think that's that's very true uh, and the factors that kind of get you caught are, are kind of similar, actually. So that's what the research tells us is that, um, you know, as JP highlighted, when when something's scary, the body will go into protective mode. Yeah. It's really natural. And the problem is the brain can't work out if it's tissue damage, like if it's a broken bone. Yeah. Like a muscle spasm can feel like like a cramp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a muscle spasm can feel as excruciating as a broken bone. But you know from a cramp, you need to stretch that muscle and get it moving. Where the broken bone, if you do that, is going to not work at all. Yeah. And the brain can't do that with the back very easily. Mm-hmm. And, and so you have to, we have to rely, as healthcare practitioners, and rely on the history is really important, as well as the presentation. But also part of that process of, of working with people is as people start relaxing and moving, if it's a broken bone, it feels worse. Yeah. <laughs> if, it's not, if it's not damaged, it will feel better. Yeah. And I think what you highlighted in that second event is you got onto it quickly yeah. and very quickly everything settled down, yeah. which highlighted you hadn't dam- done major damage to your back. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just that the body had gone, oh my God, yeah. it's that thing again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like gone into massive protective mode. Yeah. And that's a really hard thing for people to understand is that, we often hear this, how could I be, I be in that much pain and not be damaged? That, how does yeah. that even work? Oh, I know, I know I did it to myself. I know, you know, I know that my mind did it. But then, like I say, every now and again, my, my brain would give me glimpses of, I think you're doing this. Yeah. I think this is partly yeah. on you, you know, you're yeah. doing this to yourself. Yeah. So it wasn't without a couple of warnings, yeah. but I didn't know what to do with yeah. that. So. And it's interesting. The other thing that I think is worth just um, highlighting is the things that from the research that we know are predictors of a, like a, a back pain event are often, like you said, overdoing something. Mm-hmm. So doing something you're not accustomed to, yeah. doing something suddenly or awkwardly, yeah. um, or doing something when you're run down under pressure or you know, under stress mm-hmm. or not sleeping or your other stresses in your life, that your body's just more vulnerable at that time. Yeah. Yeah, and it sounded like the uh, 
you know, the dig in the ditch was after you were hung over and you went to town on it and your yeah. body's like going, nah, that's yeah, not so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, look, I just remembered another thing that I was always putting time on myself, like to, like, I would think if I can weed, do weeding for like, you know, two hours, then I can, I'm closer to getting back to work or, or, or whatever. You know, I put time limits on everything as yeah. if, you know, or I'd get set back that far. I remember telling the physio, like, I'm, I'm weeding for two hours and this should mean, and he was like, do you weed at work? Like, is that what you do for work? I was like, nah. And he goes, well, what are you doing? What are you doing it for, you know? I'm like, oh, I don't know. It just made sense at the time, I guess. Yeah, yeah I, so, I think it's uh, often when, when you're in that really stressed state, you yeah. just do stuff. Do weird stuff, yeah. 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 It's, I think it's quite a natural thing. It's yeah. obviously good to bounce that stuff off as, people. Yeah, as well as drugs as well. Like, if yeah. you're taking those drugs, you know, like oh, tramadol and that, like, yeah, it's pretty heavy stuff. I didn't know that Lyrica was actually a, a really quite a strong drug. I just thought it was a... It was probably a nerve drug, which I didn't need, you know. It was, I think it is a nerve drug, isn't it? There we go. So, yeah, and I never had nerve pain. Yeah, yeah I was on that stuff, you know. Yeah. Jamie, given your experience uh, with so many healthcare pr- practitioners, how do you feel uh, was the, the, the professional's response to your pain? Did you feel like they were confident to give you stuff no, to do or they were no. scared themselves? I think confusion. Like, um, because I didn't have sciatica, it was like, well, what do we do with this dude, you know? Like, get him an MRI, get a CAT scan. I had a nerve sleeve injection. But like I say, I, I, you know, I never had nerve... Pro- yeah. Well, unless you get nerve pain down the bottom of your back or whatever. I, but I never had that. <laughs> so, yeah, I had that for nothing, you know? Um, CAT scans, MRIs, where they put the stuff in the fluid and yeah. stuff like that. And, you know... Um, and were they confident to get you moving? Or were they... No, no, no. I, I think when they saw... Because I could, I could still bend down and touch my toes. And, and physios, were, some of them were going like... What? Like, no, they were lifted... One was lifting my leg and he's going... And it got past the point of where he... So, no, I wasn't bending down and touching my toes. He lifted my leg and it got past the point where he supposed I would have sciatic pain. And he said, oh, you're actually like... The, I can move your leg quite far, and I said, "Yeah, I, I haven't got the the leg, <laughs> the leg pain. pain. It's, not it's my, my back." Like, and it, there was seemed to be a lot of confusion around that, and that's well, stuff that I'd read on. There was very little, like literature. Sorry, mate, on the um, on the on the website for just that particular back pain yeah, okay. in lower back. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find a hell of a lot. It was mostly sciatica mm-hmm. and that. And the other cool thing in your story is that, uh, which again reflects the literature, is that we we see that it's it's kind of important for people to have uh, when they have flare ups, and especially if they are being coached by someone, yeah. because as you experience, you have the flare up, and all of those bad thoughts come back, and Fine. the behaviors come yeah. back. And if you have someone coaching you, uh, it's a way of relearning the new skill, yeah. uh, and that strengthens the new skill. And yeah. that's probably is what happened to you over those six months of rehab where you you had little flare-ups and then you learn a new skill and you manage to practice that and then when you had a flare-up it's almost like you're squishing the the threat memory yeah, yeah, and yeah. strengthening that safe memory yeah, that uh, right. along yeah. the way and and who knows if i get a flare-up again i might not need to call anyone i may get through it and maybe it would get to that stage i, I don't really want to find out but you know, <laughs> it, it may be that way you know i could try but i i think I can imagine I'd probably want to talk to someone mm. just, mm. you know, just out of habit, I suppose. And if you've got someone that you trust, well, mm. why wouldn't you, you know? Yeah, exactly. Why try and do it yourself, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank no you worries. So yeah. Awesome. No worries. So, as we mentioned, flare ups are common. And back in episode 14, we spoke with another patient voice, Joe. He'd been through several pain flares throughout his journey. And I actually interviewed Joe back in 2018 while he was in the middle of one of the worst of his flare-ups. So we played that back to him during the episode and it resulted in some incredible learnings. But for your convenience, here is that section of the podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode, it's all about imaging and scans for back pain. Joe, you kind of mentioned before there was a little bit of a period there where everything was going great. You were back to doing everything that you loved and then shit hit the fan. 
Yeah. Okay. So I mean, about a year after I, I, I started coming good and I got some really good advice, uh, I, I ended up having a, a pain flare and uh, I, I think almost uh, the, the sailing was a little bit too smooth for the 12 months before it because it, it just, it came out of nowhere and it absolutely hit me, hit me for six. So um, essentially I, I'd been going good for about 10, 12 months and then out of nowhere, there was just a, a tiny little niggle. And, and then over about an hour, it, it built up, built up. And then the, the familiar sensation of my back going into spasm was, was, um, was, was there. And I was all bent up and I was just in a lot of pain and I couldn't relax. And my mind was going back to, you know, you know, Oh God, just try and I was, I was still trying to move as much as I could, but my mind was going back mm. to, Oh, what if, what if, you know, I started just, getting a, a few more negative thoughts, which um, then, uh, I mean, the, the pain probably only lasted about a week, but the, the negative, um, uh, the, it just made me feel vulnerable again. And, and the, the negative mental sort of side of things hung around for months and months and months. And, and I started having just a few more pain flares and, and things just sort of started to unravel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, we, I was lucky enough to catch up with you. Well, yeah, fortunate enough to catch up with you at that time. Yeah, yeah. I actually recorded a little bit um, of a video, which I want to play for you now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I think it sort of highlights um, certainly how when you have a pain flare, lots of your old beliefs come rushing back. Absolutely. Um, so let's have a quick watch. It's unfortunately my, my subconscious, because I had that vulnerable period and, and there was a period where my brain was anxious and still is a little bit, um, at the moment, it's 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 going through negative possibilities, like, like that the disc bulges are bigger, that the degeneration is still there, that you know that these things do mean that pain should be. It's just it's just giving it a meaning and it's it's giving it power and. Mm. So that was about two years ago, one, one or two years yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, I guess, guess probably more than two years ago now, yeah. Yeah. So, so watching that back now, what's going through your head? Oh, it, it just, it just, I remember it like it was yesterday, you know, like just the, 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 the rapid progression and then all of a sudden I just had these pain flares and, and I was right back where I sort of started and I just started being really worried again. And, and I mean, it was, it was like, you, you know, you're building a house or a tower or a stack of Jenga and you just start taking pieces out. Every, every, every flare was like just taking pieces out of that, that foundation that I you know, worked so hard and done, you know, help build up. And, and I guess what happened is, is the pain flare, although, although the original pain flare only lasted a week or two, mm. it, it got me worried again. And then that worry fed back in to, to not only making the pain worse, but also wondering what was behind the pain. And then, and then when that started happening, maybe my movement started being affected. I started becoming a bit worried to do certain things again. And then, you know, I stopped, stopped doing things that were distracting and fun. And, and I just ended up, it was just a downward sort of spiral down yeah. and, and everything sort of fed back into making the pain worse Then the pain fed into my mental health and then the mental health just has an impact on everything. And so, what would you say to that, Joe, now? Don't worry about it. <laughs> what do you listen to you, though? Oh, I don't know. I, I like to think I'd listen to myself. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, look, I mean, honestly, if, if, I, if I saw into the future, at, at that point in time, if I, if I looked forward into the future and saw where I am now, it would have been it would have been a two week problem. I would have taken it a little bit easy while the the pain was bad, while it was flared up, and then I would have just got on with it. Because you know, if 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 the worry's not there about the the loss of function and and identity and physical activity and work and that sort of stuff, if the worry's not there, then pain's easy to deal with. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if you if you think well, pain doesn't if the pain doesn't mean anything the pain itself isn't really a problem. It's, uh, it's what the pain means. And so if, if you look forward and go, oh, if I, if I saw myself in 80 years and I was jogging down the street, I, I wouldn't have a care in the world until I probably got to 80 and then I'd start worrying again. Yeah. But, so did you get another scan then? Nah. Why? Because 
given that you were worried about it, why didn't you? Because I, I had some some really good people in my corner telling me I didn't need to, right? And I didn't didn't. Really, oh, oh, and also, even though I was back to sort of, I, I got really bad. I, I spiraled all the way back down to not quite where I was, but but pretty close. But I still held on to some of the key messages from mm. from all of my time and my experience from from the the progression before. And so I knew that, like, uh, you know, I was still telling myself all the right messages, you know, pain doesn't mean damage, movement's good for me. I still had all these positive messages going through my head, which I didn't have before, but they were just getting overwhelmed by the Mm. other side of things, Mm. which which was that. But I I still had some really good people in my corner telling me, you're going to get through this. And Mm. and I I ended up, you know, I didn't, it, it was a while. I mean, a, a two week problem became a six month problem, but you know, slowly got back on top of it. And, mm. and then, and I'm, I'm just on the way now. So it's yeah. all good. So if you had another two week event, do you think it would be different? The oh, next time? I, I, I've had a, I had a week long event about six months ago, actually. Mm. And it, it was, it was weird. I just thought, I, I think, the, the, the more experience that you have dealing with this and, mm. and the more tools I'd been given and the mm. more I'd been sort of, uh, you, you know, you, you live the experience and, and, and once you've, once you've done these things a few times before, as I said, I think the first time the sailing was a little bit too smooth, but now mm. that I've had a few, few rockier sort of seas, it, it just, it just helps, you know, like. You, so what did you different the last time six months ago? I just didn't worry. I just, no. I just distracted myself. No. I just went, you know what? This will, this will get better. You know, I, I can't do X, Y, and Z for now, but as soon as I can do those things, I'm right. going to do them. Right. And, and I sort of went, well, I've been so much worse than this before. Why, why is this, why is this going to be any different to the last mm. two, three times where, you know, I got back to being awesome. got back to being fantastic. And what if it didn't get better in a week? How would you oh, feel? I, I mean, look, I still am, am really, really happy that I know when things get really bad, I've still got some really good people in my corner. Yeah, right. Um, so did you go and see anyone six I, months ago? I didn't. I right, didn't. You did it yourself. I did it myself. Right. Okay. Uh, and, and as you said, you know, because it only lasted a week, maybe yeah. maybe that was, if yeah. it lasted a month or two months, Yeah. I mean, it's... it's some help. Yeah, well, absolutely. It's, um, you know... I didn't seek help. Maybe a week wasn't long enough. I was able to get mm. ma- navigate that myself, mm. but I don't know if, if it had been going for two weeks or a month or mm. two months, I, I would have started to, to call, call mm. in some, yep. well, I, w- I would have started to mobilize the team. So there you have it. The end of another episode. As I mentioned at the start, hit us up via social media. If you want more, share the podcast, spread the good word, write a, view, a review on iTunes and help support us so that we can support you. My take-homes from today, flare-ups, while certainly not pleasant, are unfortunately common and a pretty normal part of recovery. While they can be terrifying in the moment, they don't last forever and can be an incredibly important learning opportunity. They are usually more related to things that sensitize our system like poor sleep, stressful times, being more sedentary, working longer hours, not having time to recover or doing too much too soon and infrequently relate to creating further damage, even though it may be really painful. And although it can feel like a big step back and that you've undone all your progress, this is rarely the case. You may find it helpful to think of it as a temporary pause on your progress, and certainly not a restart. What were your take-homes? We'd love to hear them. Share them and tag us via EBP podcast on social media. And until next time, remember to ask... Is there more to pain than damage? Please note, what you heard on this episode of Empowered Beyond Pain is strictly for information purposes only and does not substitute personalised, high-value care from a licensed and trusted healthcare practitioner. We are all individuals and need to be assessed and managed as such. Theme music generously provided by Fervin and Cash.